name is Carol Hemphill. I was praying and I was online because I was looking for a um, a solution to um, I I had been having vertigo and I'd been having congestion in my upper head kind of I was clearing my throat all the time and I um I wanted to see if I could find I think that it was caused by the COVID vaccine which I got against my better judgment and then realized I made a mistake so I was looking for a um some kind of a detox for the for the COVID um vaccine and so so I was praying and I I went online and I was uh, I found this, it was Spike Shield. And and so I started looking at it. It was by uh, Dr. Glenn. And then I listened to a video of Dr. Glenn speaking about the remedy. And um, I was just, um, I just right away, I felt like you guys were my friends or, or just like kindred people, you know. Uh, yeah, we are. <laughs> I just felt that way right away. And it, it's just wonderful, so. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so thankful that I met you guys. Um, yeah, so I let's see. You said that my eye exam looked everything looked excellent on it, and I have a few small cataracts, but I'm thinking they can go away, right? Yeah, cataracts are one of the hardest things to reverse uh-huh. uh, because it's the densest protein in the body. Mm-hmm. Think of joints like joint cartilage. There's no blood vessels, mm-hmm. but this is a protein like that, but even denser. It is living cells and the, and those cells that we make when we're born and when we're 10 years old and when we're 20 years old, the continu- lens continues to grow new layers and new cells. But even at the center of the lens, those lenses, those lens cells that were there when we were born, we want to keep them alive still now so that they don't form a cataract. Yeah. A cataract is when the, those lens cells are not healthy enough to pump the fluid out to keep the lens dehydrated, keep the water enough water out to keep it clear. If, if too much water gets in, if it doesn't have the energy to pump the water out, it swells, it gets cloudy, it becomes a cataract, it, cells can die, that becomes a more dense yeah. cataract. And, and if the cell is dead, it's harder to reverse it. If it's the earlier stages where it's just a lack of fluid and the cells aren't healthy and happy, it's, that's where we can reverse that and get the, the cells healthier again. Because it's such a dense protein, it's physiologically it's furthest away from the blood supply and therefore very dependent on the quality of the general circulation in the eye area. Now, the eyes are incredibly uh, sensitive to circulation just in general. The the retina is the most active tissue in the body, the highest metabolism, highest oxygen demand, highest need for direct circulation. And again, here, the lens where cataract forms mm-hmm. the furthest from, but in both cases, they need the circulation in order to maintain health, to get oxygen and nutrients in, to get toxins out. You know, we get we get uh, things like heavy metals can get into the lens and poison those enzymes that are pumping the, the, the fluids and making the, en- the energy for the cells. Cool. Uh, get sugar in there if sugar is not regulating properly and it can bind on to the cells and any of the tissue in the cells and and cause called glycation and that's that's about a third of the damage in cataract is usually sugar the other two thirds probably mostly uh is oxidation where things like heavy metals or other toxins or just lack of oxygen causes free radicals to to kind of burn and break down the, the tissues so it's sugar building up on building up on the tissue and making it not work right or mm-hmm. Electrons being stolen by oxidation and kind of burning, taking pieces off. Well, well, they told me eight years ago that I had some small ones, and then eight years later they told me they're still small. So hopefully they'll stay okay. small. <laughs> yep, and they can. I I yeah. first found out that I had cataracts when I was in my twenties. Oh at, wow! At, at an optometry meeting at another optometry school, and was visiting, and and they looked in. They said, "Oh, you have." Posterior polar cataracts. Oh, what's that? I hadn't even heard of that. Uh, right. And these are little cataracts, and they're still there, and they're stable through life. In my case, probably from sensitivity to cow dairy products when I was a baby. Yeah. Um, the doctor back then, fortunately, told my parents, "Oh, you need to 
get him off the cow dairy and go to this farm over here and get some goat milk and and he'll do better on that that's a smaller protein it's easier to digest and so yeah there's 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 a number of different types of cataract and ca different causes there's a uh, posterior subcapsular cataract where it's more an accumulation of debris on the back of the surface of the lens and i've seen that dissolve and and clear off and that's more related to like inflammation and the relationship between the immune system, which creates inflammation to try to clean out the system and the adrenals that, that help to regulate that and keep the inflammation from getting out of control. Yeah. We have, that's why we have, instead of just having an eye formula, like a lot of companies, we've got a lot of eye formulas. We've got a whole <laughs> handful of different formulas for different types and aspects of cataract. We've got a whole bunch for glaucoma, a whole bunch for macular degeneration, a whole bunch that apply to dry eye, and then lots of things for other parts of the body too, because the eyes, I like to say the eyes don't get sick on their own in yeah. the back. You yeah. know, and on circulation, like we're talking about, immunity, yeah. uh, things like the adrenal immune relationship and the endocrine system, uh, digestion for nutrition, the detoxification organs to 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 cleanse the tissues, the kidney, the liver. So so we work with the whole person, and it's uh, that's how we have fun. <laughs> we like looking at the big picture, and we like the results that we see. Where people are, you do have people who reverse cataract. It's it's not as high a percentage of the the people as we see in macular degeneration. It's probably the highest. It's like over ninety percent. Wow, of them actually get improved eye health and improved uh, vision uh, where the textbooks still today say it's irreversible. And with the standard care, it is irreversible. There are no treatments. There's there's nothing that yeah. you know, slow it down or stabilize it. That's the best you can hope for. But uh, there are a handful of other eye doctors around the country, ophthalmologists, optometrists, uh, one acupuncturist, uh, that I know of, who's doing a, really focusing on on eye disease, and and they're all seeing that what we see is that no, no, it, it's reversible, but you have to work with the whole person. These are you know often aging related issues. Well, we lose circulation as we age. We lose thirty percent of our circulation on average in forty years of aging. But now we know that there's technologies, healing tools that we can use daily at home that can actually bring back. 30% increase in circulation. There's no drugs that'll do that. There's no exercise that'll do that, but a certain uh, highest quality pulsed electromagnetic field mats you can you can lie on and relax for 15 minutes twice a day while you're you know listening to music or whatever it is, mm -hmm. relaxing and, and it's bringing back circulation and sustaining that through the day until the next uh, time cool. that you do the therapy. Um, I, I was told that Possibly I got the cataracts from uh, being outside without sunglasses. Well, that's been uh, that's been a big focus on in, in the conventional view, a theory that that ultraviolet light is the problem. It well, it certainly is can cause free radicals. So it's ionizing radiation. So it can directly damage like you can get sunburn. Yeah. But you know what? One of the clues to the flip side of that argument of that that <laughs> hypothesis for me was researching cataract early on, looking at all the blinding eye diseases, because I was gonna go blind if I didn't figure out something beyond the standard care for glaucoma, I would've been blind in my forties. So I was yeah. looking at cataract as well. And there was a study from Italy and they looked at cataract risk for different professions. And you know who turned out to have a reduced risk of cataract was the farmers. Oh. I thought, well, that's interesting because that does not point to UV as a problem. And there That's, are yeah, because I, I was a gardener for many years for other people. And so I was outside a lot. And um and so so that's kind of a farmer. <laughs> yes. yes. That's and, yeah. And that the more we're learning about light energy and the environment, the more point the more studies are pointing to actually we need sunlight. We need full spectrum light, we, including a balanced amount of the U, UV, the ultraviolet, that is ionizing. But that's what we need it to make vitamin D. We need it for, for other aspects of normal metabolism. We don't need too much. You don't want to get a sunburn. You don't want to be, you know, uh, you know, exposed to excess amounts. But we need uh, we need it in balance. And 
the comfort of the eyes, the comfort of her vision, the comfort of her skin, that's, that's as a first rule of thumb, that's a good guide to what's a healthy amount. Like, that's oh, good. it's comfortable? Well, it's, my body's smart. <laughs> it's smarter than, you know, <laughs> science, scientific theories, because those theories usually prove to be not quite the whole story, another, you know, yeah. days later. That's a good one. That's a good one. Yeah. Makes sense, too. <laughs> yep. Now, Come here's on. another, here's the flip side of that. Now, those those farmers in, in Italy were probably eating their own produce, so they're eating local, fresh, ripe, organic produce, and that means their what's in their system is healthy, and therefore the light that's hitting that is energizing something that's healthy, and it can make it more energetic and more more healthy. Yeah. There was a study in Australia where they looked at sunbathers, two groups of sunbathers. One group <coughs> was eating butter, and the other group was eating margarine. Well, guess what? They looked at skin cancer, and the ones that are eating margarine got 700% more skin cancer than the ones eating butter. Butter's a natural oil. It's a healthy oil. And don't listen to you know, ne necessarily what the government says to eat canola oil, not butter, because yeah. it's saturated versus mono on sat no, 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 no. <laughs> look at Look at history. Look at tribes and peoples. Who ate what? People ate olive oil in Italy, and they were that's a healthy diet. No tribe ever survived, never ate canola oil. It means, stands for Canadian Oil Company. Comes from a, a bush called the rapeseed, which nobody ever ate, but they can make an oil from it commercially in modern times that nobody ever ate. It's not a healthy oil. It's it's an oil, even though it's, mo it's monounsaturated. So the theory was it's monounsaturated, just, just like olive oil. It's not just like all, olive oil. It's in that same category. It's not the same. That that's like the, you know, I was looking at some different yogurts today when I was shopping. I've been using a sheep's milk yogurt. It's great. Nice. But, yeah. I, but I thought, oh, I'll look at the oat milk yogurt and the almond milk yogurt. And they have all this extra stuff in it, like all these oils and additives and guar gum. And and I was going, why would I want to do that? <laughs> I mean, um, yeah. 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 We look at look at now, are you dealing with any uh any macular degeneration or is it just cataract? Just cataract. Uh, okay. he, he said I had no macular degeneration, Great. Just, Great. just the familial, the familial stuff around the edges. He said I had familial, familial um drusen, but it was all like around, okay. it wasn't on the macula. Okay, okay. So so let's look at drusen. Drusen probably somewhat similar in causality. Familial, okay, familial. A lot of things are said they're familial, and which means it yeah it runs in your family. But that doesn't mean that the the primary cause is your genes. It means that given the modern environment and the modern diet, yeah, it's their genes are susceptible to this particular distress. We have the same kind of drusen, same kind of deposits in the brain in in Alzheimer's as we do in the macula in macular degeneration. And now you've got a familial version of that. So it's maybe similar. And we want to, we'd like to see that uh, dissolve and clear out because the toxic deposits of cholesterol with heavy metals and whatever else the body can't get rid of as fast as it's building up. So uh, with uh, with macular degeneration, I, I can say more about it, you know, from what I've studied, that we know that we, we had, they had microscopes to be able to see in the retina it's back into the early 1800s, and there was no observation of macular degeneration. Only in the later 1800s did that start to appear, and only at a time when they began to have the, the commercial food processing to be able to make seed oils, things like the canola oil, that's newer, but, but they started to have vegetable oils, corn oil. Native Americans ate a lot of corn, but they never ate corn oil. <laughs> you know, it wasn't- yeah. Even processed, it wasn't a thing. Yeah. So the oils that they did have, uh, butter or you know, fat from uh, fi fish, fatty fish, or you know, other oils were were relatively healthy oils mm -hmm. compared to what people started eating. And then we started seeing these fat deposits in 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 the retina and in the brain, and it's all a modern disease. And they talk about well, it's it's familial because you know your mother and your grandmother had it, so it runs in the family. Yeah, but but their great grandparents before there was were these processed foods, 
didn't have it at all. And still at this time in parts of the world where there is no shipment of processed foods into that area and they're still just eating from the land, the disease doesn't exist. Wow. So those are, to me, those are big clues. That, yeah. That, yeah, yeah, we can we can modify our environment back closer to what it, what, what it was for millions of years <laughs> before we changed it to what it is now and and try to eat foods that where you don't have to read a big label and wonder what all those chemicals are. I, I wonder, you know, guar gum, hey, I think that's okay. That's a fiber. It's a natural fiber. That's probably fine. But you got to look it up and, and learn about it and see if that's something you want to eat. And what about all those other things? Maybe some of them, and usually when it's a whole bunch of things listed, there's some things that are, to me, not, you know, they're questionable. They're like, or or they're just no way. Oh, it's got canola oil in it. I will not buy that food. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A couple of years ago, um, against my better judgment, I got one dose of the COVID vaccine. Mm hmm I was dating at the time and the guy said, oh, you need to get this, you know, and, and I talked, I let him talk me into it. And so, mm -hmm. um, and then I regretted it. And then ironically, a few months later, I got the, the uh, virus, the COVID virus. Yeah. And we, we know now from the research, it certainly, it actually made us more, if we got the vaccine, it didn't prevent us from getting it or from transmitting it, which is what they all, you know, sold right. it based on it actually increased susceptibility and there was a study um uh, early on that i that i saw that that showed that uh in in the navy they found that the uh navy personnel who had had the flu vaccine the previous summer were actually at increased risk for for getting a covid symptoms and infection so it's and, and that's to me that's you know it's a whole i put it in 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 the basket of Vaccines in general are are toxic. They overstimulate the immune system. They they make us super, you know, supposedly prepared for that one stress, and they make us adapt and lose our flexibility to be able to adapt to other stresses, and often make us even more at risk for the thing that is supposedly right. preventing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, and I knew that I I wasn't going to get it. You know, I knew that I was like dead set against it, and then somehow or other. Just from all the craziness that was going on at the time, it was nuts. Yeah, my friend, you know, he's going, oh, and my and everybody in my family, they were going, oh, you need to go get. So, I felt yeah. very pressured, and I went and got one dose of it, and never went back. But anyway, so a few months after that, I actually got the virus, mm -hmm. and I actually lost my sense of taste and smell for a couple of weeks, which was not fun at all. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and um, anyway, then I noticed that ever since then that point, I had this congestion that was up in my head area. I was clearing my throat all the time. And I also was getting this vertigo and not like extreme vertigo where the room was spinning, but just feeling really off balance and like disoriented. So I was thinking that it was linked to the, to the vaccine or the, and, and or the virus. So yeah, I, a lot of people are describing long COVID or, yeah, or right. post back right. symptoms. Very similar. We we developed a, a formula called uh, called Spike Shield. Uh, that, yeah. Well, Carol's oh, been you're, taking it. You're, you're taking it. Okay. That's what the story Great. is. Yeah. 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 So yeah. that so that's what started my whole story was. Mm -hmm. So I uh, I knew I knew that people were getting vestibular neuritis, which I thought maybe I had, you know, the and from the vaccine or or getting the virus. So I was praying, and. Mm -hmm. um, I was online and I was praying for some some way to detoxify from both of those things from the vaccine. And yep. then I I just stumbled on Spike Shield. And I went, Spike Shield. And then I was looking at, okay, it's made by Dr. Glenn Swartwout. And and so then I look, I watched a video of Glenn, of you um talking about that remedy. I think it was at a church. And yep. you were doing this, and I watched the whole thing, and I was just amazed because I felt like you were really authentic, and really had a lot of humility and like so much knowledge about healing. And I was just like, "Yes, this is what I'm looking for." You know, I was nice. just really thankful. So then I ordered some of the Spike Shield, and I started taking it, and and actually within a month or two, I did see an improvement in the in the um 
vertigo. Right. I still I still had the congestion, but the vertigo was was better. So the 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 vertigo to me suggests a decrease in the circulation to the the head, which like we're saying for the eyes for cataract prevention. Right. Basic for every every function. Yeah. Uh, the, whereas the 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 congestion, like mucus kind of congestion, is more of an elimination symptom. It's something coming out, which we look at that as not necessarily it's uncomfortable, it's it's you know, it's annoying, but it's an elimination. So your body is cleansing, it's getting something out that it needs to get out. Um so uh, to give an example of sort of why that's not all bad is if you suppress that. Like like with uh, sinus congestion, people will take whatever Afrin or some kind of decongestant spray, antihistamine type of thing. Well, people who do that for sinus, whether it's allergy or other congestion, they wind up having increased risk for cancer in the sinuses, but also for cancer in the brain. So it, it's coming out of the head. It's cleaning the head area. The brain's right next door to it. And the eyes are surrounded by sinuses, so it would be similar for the eyes. Yeah. So would, do we really want to, you know, dry up our drippy nose so we can go back to work and, and not drip on our paper on, you know, or on our keyboard or something at work? Yeah. Or maybe we can find a better way because we can reduce symptoms by supporting the immune system, which is creating that cleansing effect, yeah. supporting it to get the job done more efficiently. One of my my first mentor, naturopath, who was head of the the board at, of uh, directors at the school up in Toronto, and he saved my life. He he he's he put me on the right path um, to save my vision and save my life. And and he one of the things that he said is this, where the symptom is is often at the opposite end of opposite opposite end of the body of where the cause is it's the, the so the, the drippy nose or the congestion in the in the sinuses may be an a sort of like the release valve the overflow valve for stress in the kidneys the kidneys are having a hard time cleansing the blood getting it all out so some of it is still in the tissues and the immune system says yeah. we can break some of this down locally here and get it out through the mucous membranes so if we help the kidneys that can help the congestion so we can relieve the congestion by suppressing the cleansing, push the toxins in deeper, have deeper, worse problems in the future. Even aspirin, there's studies on aspirin with headache that show that it increases the chance of having a headache tomorrow and the next day and next week and next month and next year. And so it's great for aspirin sales because it pushes the headache into the future when the body gets strong enough to try to clean out that tissue again because the immune system makes inflammation to dissolve, to turn like gelatin into a solution to make it inflame, to swell it, to make it uh, more of a, a, to dissolve whatever's there so it can flow out. And then it can go back to a gel form of healthy tissue versus forcing it with a, with a, a antihistamine or a aspirin or NSAID or steroids, forcing it into an alkaline state where it forms a gel with now the toxin is still there, plus the drug is there. So now you've got a new a new disease, which is a toxin, a drug. Yeah. And yeah. actually that's that's the meaning, the actual meaning of the type of medicine that dominates today called allopathic medicine. Allo means different, pathic disease. They treat a disease with a different disease, which is a drug, because it changed it, it, it manages the symptoms. They don't call it healing. They don't call it curing. They call it managing the symptoms of disease. Wow. Yeah. Well, well, my mother used to do this thing. If I was getting a cold or a fever or something, or she used to feel behind my ears to see if it was sore back there. Mm -hmm. And so I was also noticing that it, it was sore back there. And um, since I've been using these remedies, I don't have that anymore. You know, okay. Yep. Yeah. So decreased inflammation, which is a key to almost every yeah. disease process. But again, it's also a key to cleansing and it's produced by the immune system. But if it's effective, then it, do it doesn't become chronic and it doesn't get out of control and do damage. So so we don't want those allergy symptoms to be out of control and, and chronic and doing damage. And we don't want to have autoimmune inflammation causing damage but we want to have the immune system strong and effective and get the job done and 
oh, move move it out if it doesn't belong and heal it. It should be fast. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, so like, like even even getting getting a, a quick flu and or cold in the spring or the fall or both actually is part of health. If you're so healthy that you never get a fever, you never get a cold or a flu, that's possible. That's rare. More often, what I'll see is somebody comes and finds us, they, they just got diagnosed with cancer and they're, they cannot believe it. They, they, what they'll say is, I was the healthiest person I know. For 30 years, I never even got a cold. That, oh yeah that actually means your energy was low enough to produce cancer not high enough to produce a fever and cleanse the tissue when we have a, a stomach flu it yeah. doesn't just clean out the, the virus that triggered the stomach flu it cleans out everything in the stomach all the toxins it's a general cleansing effect and that's why they're using now well we can use saunas to prevent to cleanse the body they're yeah. using hyperthermia of the whole body or localized on an, on an area where a tumor is to help the body heal it. In every case of spontaneous remission where cancer is healed in three days, typically with a high fever, and there's a bacterial infection going on. Now, if, if most people in our culture have some cancer and eventually half of them will get diagnosed, <sighs> If they get a bacterial infection or a fever, should they take an antibiotic and, and kill the bacteria and suppress the fever when that might be curing an unknown cancer or a future cancer? I, I think there's a better way. We can use probiotics to compete with the bacteria that's making some toxins that are irritating to us. Like yeah. I've seen with strep throat, when it's just starting and everybody else who's gotten it, they're just, oh, Oh, the throat is so sore and they're just having to go home and stay mm -hmm. home for days mm -hmm. open a open a probiotic capsule especially if it's got multiple species in it take a little bit of that powder in the mouth and close the capsule and swallow the rest of it for the gut but that little bit of different species to eat whatever it is we're feeding that bacteria because bacteria don't grow without food you know if we want to diagnose it you got to take a swab and take a sample and you have to put it in a petri dish it's designed to grow bacteria. Hmm. It won't grow in a petri dish that's designed for viruses. That needs attenuated cells. Bacteria need their food. Different petri dish will grow a fungus. Hmm. Uh, so, so that's what we call terrain, the whole science of what I call the phases of healing. Low energy terrain is where viruses can grow and degenerative disease and cancer. That's a low energy state. A virus can't even move. It has no, no moving parts to swim. It's attracted magnetically to a cell that has no energy or low, very low energy. And then the cell reproduces it. So it takes that toxic DNA or RNA, makes more nucleic acids and, and excretes them. Well, there's a whole other view of that that says, wait a minute, maybe that's part of how the cell gets rid of toxic DNA. What, what's toxic to the DNA? Well, heavy metals are attracted to the DNA and they accumulate. So if we have a virus, a cold virus, a flu virus, those are common ones that body can use to cleanse whatever tissue it is, a head cold or a stomach flu, or we're cleaning out our cells and preventing the heavy metals being in the nucleus of the cell that, you know, that interfere with metabolism. Cool. Yeah. Well, so, so the rest of the story is that um, I took the the spike protein for a while, and then I decided, um, you know, just a month or so ago to do the biofield analysis with you. And so you did that, and I did the voice thing. And then I, after being on the remedies for about a month, I've been on them for a month and 10 days now, and I don't have that congestion anymore. And I, I rarely have any kind of um, sense of a vertigo. Nice. That's fantastic. Yeah, I mean, just after a month, wow, I, I'm, that's really I'm not quick. clearing my throat all the time. You know, it's great. And um, what Good else? <laughs> oh, I'm also getting compliments on my skin, <laughs> which you know I didn't get before. Um, people are saying, "Wow, you know, your skin looks really nice. You look like you're, you know, you can't be more than 60. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. okay, hey, that's cool. Thank and, you. <laughs> um, yeah. And uh, what else? Oh yeah, and also I feel this more like 
kind of at a, on a low burn, I just feel this stable, constant energy, mm -hmm. which is really nice. It's it's not too much. It's not over the top. It's just there. And it and I feel I just have this nice, constant energy now. And that also is different from a, a month ago. Beautiful. That's very quick. Yeah, you're you're uh yeah Respond restoring to. your energy, your your energy. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. then I was going to tell you that story about the endocrine restore. Um, I, I took the, okay, so I didn't know what to expect, but I liked the taste of it. Um, it. It was real earthy and I just loved the taste of it. And it just felt like my body was just, you know, it was just what my body was wanting. And then I went out for a walk right after that. And it was a spring rain. I wrote this down. It was a spring rain. And um, I just felt like, Everything was technicolor. It was just my senses were just way, wow. home, you know, yeah. and my I could um, smell everything more. I could uh, in and the colors and the sounds. I, I heard birds. I saw I remember I saw a robin. I saw some lilacs and I saw three deer and I saw a white white um, irises, which I love. And I went and smelled them and just everything was just like, you know, just so earthy and just um much more vibrant, much vibrant. more vibrant and alive. And just I, from taking that first dose of the- That's of the, really spectacular. It, it makes me think of the saying, as above, so below, or as, you know, at your, our sensorium is us. We're, everything you see, yeah. the image is being created by your spirit in your brain, projected yeah. out into space, which is you, your space of your spirit, yeah. your sensorium. So it's becoming more alive out there because it's, you're more alive internally. internally. Yeah, it was just wonderful. Beautiful. I still love taking that endocrine restore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's great. So, um, yeah, and I think that for some reason, I think that has a lot to do with my energy levels. I, they feel more balanced. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's for the for the hormonal, hormonal. system, which yeah. is the primary, a primary regulator of energy, the, the thyroid, the adrenals. Thyroid for long-term energy metabolism and adrenal for short-term boosts when we need it. Uh, they, so they're a team that work on that. It and, feels it feels like a food to me yeah. that when I take that endocrine restore, it's like I ate something it, that it gave me energy. It um, I felt you know like I don't even feel like I need to eat something for a while because yeah. that felt like I ate something really nourishing. That's that's, really that's a beautiful de description. The 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 whole approach. Uh, of the, if you look at the dosages, there are hormones in there, natural hormones the body yeah. Yeah. makes, and yeah. this it's give, we're giving them the a nice the biggest amount is a small very small amount, but the biggest amount we can give before the body says, oh well that's already there I don't need to make it, so we're not we're not we're not suppressing the body by substituting by saying. Here's all the hormones, like a typical yeah. hormone therapy is yeah. substitution therapy. Here's your hormone pill. No, these are very small amounts, enough to wake that system up and say, huh, it gets the message, the signal, it wakes up those pathways and say, oh yeah, but not so much that it says we don't need to make it. So, so it, it's like brings it back to life. Wow. It's very nourishing. It's a perfect description. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it it, it was. And so, Yeah. Oh, you know, I also wanted to say that I love that you guys like Tolkien's Lord of the Rings because that's <laughs> my, oh, yes. <laughs> my favorite all-time books. And I just love that the whole mythology of that. I, yeah. I that's kind of like my my myth my personal mythology. I love it. <laughs> so that was another reason I felt a kinship with you guys. Yeah, that's a <laughs> I real think kinship. I can relate for sure. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I yeah. Do this myself. <laughs> <laughs> I also was excited, like I said, I wanted to do it because other people's uh, test things that they said really helped me a lot. And I, I appreciate yeah, exactly. it. And, you know, seeing you guys, uh, see, you know, seeing Glenn do a video and seeing uh, Dr. Glenn and then these other people, like one of them that I think one of the first ones I looked at was David Weigand. And um, oh yeah. Know, mm -hmm. nice, yeah. I liked his, his thing too. But there, there's, there, there's things in healing that are hard, you know, so, <laughs> Sometimes cleansing processes can be uncomfortable. Yeah. Uh, oh, give you a, a great example how if, if we understand it, if we can bring meaning to the process, that can help so much 
you know, if we're suffering, I had a young man who, who was having severe uh, panic attacks and we tested him and we found, you know, underlying it all was his kidneys were toxic and they really needed to cleanse, which needed some inflammation, some dissolving, some, you know, some moving out of stuff that was there. And that's when it's on the move is when you feel it. So when he started on the program to cleanse his kidneys, he started feeling this fear, which is the emotion of the kidneys. If you look at oriental medicine, yeah. so he's feeling this fear this sort of un, not fear of something, an unformed fear, just feeling fear. And, and, and we had already told him, you know, when you're going through anything, call us, let's talk, you know, let, we want to be there with you for you, help you through it, you know, help you understand what's going on. So, so <clears throat> he got in touch and, and was able to, you know, review it with him that, yeah, that's the emotion. That's the feeling of the kidneys working hard, of them cleansing and detoxifying. I, I can relate to that because I've had a few little instances of that in the last um, 40 days that have been on the remedies. There'd be like a little bit of that. And, and I, mm -hmm. I I can totally relate to that. But it, for me, it hasn't been for very long. And I, I kind of figured that it was some kind of cleansing. Yeah. So, so, so the beauty of it was he, he said, you know, I knowing that, I can I can be with that and understand that's what's happening and I can totally do this. I can I can uh -huh. handle that. But yeah. before in the past, if if what would have happened if I felt that, I would have been afraid of that spinning into a full-blown panic attack and the fear of the fear, I call it the spin cycle, you know, would have put him right there. So, oh man, I have you know, had I've had um oh. anxiety and panic attack. <laughs> <laughs> know what that's like. Yeah. 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 Yeah, well, that's really interesting to know because I suspect that when I was having some of those that that it was um, some cleansing. Yeah, that yeah. is really cool. We, we, I like to to know if somebody's going through you know what we call a healing crisis, a cleansing reaction, a die off, and in, in medicine they call it a Herxheimer reaction. If there's an antibiotic killing off a of bacteria, it's releasing toxins. So if you're going through some challenge, whatever, maybe you don't know what it is. I don't know if it's one of those things, but something's different and it's not, doesn't feel comfortable. I like to hear about it and I'll actually, I'll do an extra test, no extra charge. I want to know and be able to share. Okay. Uh, in some cases it's like, well, energetically, you don't need anything different. Uh, but, you know, we want to, we can give guidance to, you know, drink more water or rest or, you know, some, some real basic things. <laughs> or just knowing this is your body healing, it's it's doing what it needs to do. Or many times, probably more often than not, if if it's strong enough that somebody contacts me, we'll find, oh, there's this new, there's this little difference in what we're seeing. There's this new stress that wasn't showing when we designed the program. So you're going into this cleansing reaction, healing crisis, and there's this one, one new remedy we're going to send you. You'll get it in a few days. <laughs> we'll start sending it to them energetically in the meantime while it's on the way. And that mm -hmm. often, even, even just the testing itself is like an acupuncture treatment. It's balancing. We're doing a trial balancing of the body energies. I've had so many times when people thousands of miles away experience some kind of profound healing at the exact time that they don't know exactly when I'm doing the test, but we find out later. It's like, well, that's exactly, you know, when we were doing the test, I had a woman in, in New York, mm -hmm. <laughs> who was for the third time in the in the middle of the night in the ER for surgery on her small intestine to to clear a blockage she'd had it twice before surgical surgery was needed I, by the time i got the message on the west coast she's in the east coast and i do the test and it was the middle of the night there she was still in the ER by the time the the you know it was a couple hours before the doctor could see her to do the surgery by the time they did it's like but it's it's clear it's gone. That's exactly when we had done the test. We found out. Uh, it's like great. Okay, <laughs> that's oh, I like that. <laughs> by test, you mean the biofield thing? The biofield, the biofield test. When I was thinking of her, yeah, and being yeah. her energetically as yeah. a surrogate and and feeling what is how does how is her body reacting? What are the stresses? Yeah. Yeah. What balance is that? What remedies are going to work? Just doing that was enough to. You know, it was it was a blockage, so it was there's smooth muscles that are cramped, and and it relieved that cramping, and they didn't have to actually cut her open and mechanically relieve wow. the blockage. We did it energetically and informationally. How nice! Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, 
Well, I will let you guys know if I have some weird thing like that happen again. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it'll be fun. <laughs> you know, it's it's we're learning. <laughs> You're learning. We're learning. Yeah. So my dad told me when I when I finished doing research in Japan and and worked with my dad for a few years in upstate New York. He was a, a great eye doctor, and uh, he said, "So you've you've got your license now, which means the states you know tested you, and they say you you know enough to start." practicing it doesn't mean you know everything and he said but listen to your patients they will teach you the rest oh, oh. That's it's so crazy. true and and it's unfortunately often opposite to the the recommendations that that medical doctors get in their training they're told i, I hear many times i've heard this they say don't listen to your patients they're not medically trained they'll throw you off well yeah because they're going to throw you off into the real world out of this world of that everything is just a disease and a, and a, a drug or an approved drug or, or surgery to treat it and, and and maybe side effects. Don't worry about those. You know, the, they're not toxic effects of patented toxins. Yeah, they are. But, you know, it's it's this limited worldview. The way my dad put it is, is as as you specialize, you you learn more and more about less and less until you know absolutely everything about nothing at all. You know, because we lose context, we lose our peripheral vision, we lose a sense of how it all interrelates, which in life is everything. Yeah, very good. Wow. Well, well, it, it's been more than half an hour, so I, I think I need to let you go. <laughs> you might have something else you need to do. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's been fun and happy to do this again. And let's, it's going to, your, your journey and your story is not over, but this is a good first chapter. Let's see where, where it goes from there. And All right. we, you know, at least if nothing else, if we if if you're able to to keep the cataracts stable like you've been doing, yeah, uh, and improve your health and vibrant vitality yeah. and quality of life. The one of the beauty, beautiful things that comes out of the, the research is that if we improve our health, we live longer and we have fewer years of degeneration of of suffering less suffering more life throughout that lifespan yes i i feel more optimistic and hopeful about my life now i mean just just after this last month i just feel more optimistic hopeful just <laughs> so really thankful to you guys we're, we're we're meant to age like a fine wine or that you know as we become the elders we want to be present, fully present with our the wisdom of our experience for the younger generations to be able to pass that along and, and help, you know, guide people on on yeah. meaningful paths. It seems like the younger people kind of look to us, you know, for example, they go, okay, could I do that when I get to be that age? You know, they yeah. they like they like it when we're doing well. <laughs> exactly. So yeah. All right. Well, thank you very much. Uh, bless, bless you both. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Till we meet again. Okay. Okay, Carol. Hello. Right. Take care. Bye.